I'm very interesting, thank, thank you, Honourable Member, for giving away. I'm very interesting the point that she seems to be making. To make sure I've understood her correctly, are you uh, laying all of the responsibility for the, for the uh, increase in hate crime against Muslims at the door of Donald Trump? Do you not believe that some of it may have been contrib contributed to by the acts of terrorism, such as in Paris? I thank the Honourable Member for his intervention. And of course, I would not be laying all the blame of the increase in hate crimes at the door of Donald Trump. But there is a very real correlation between the words that Donald Trump is using and the increase in hate crime, which is the point that I'm trying to make, that a lot of his words means that there is real crime and real violence. And that's where I draw the line at freedom of speech. I'll give way. Lady. Many things incite violence, and uh, I don't mean to undermine her debate. For example, parliamentary regulations that we pass incite violence. Policemen are attacked, and in one case had his head chopped off. That doesn't mean to say that we should shut down debate. I'm afraid all kinds of things incite violence, often and well, always by totally irresponsible people. I thank, I thank the Honourable Member for his intervention. I don't have much time left, so I will just wrap up by saying I draw the line of freedom of speech when it actually imports violent ideology, which is what I feel is happening. The legislation in place is to protect the public and protect the people of Britain from individuals such as this. If legislation has been practiced before and other people have been stopped from coming into the country, the same rules need to apply to Donald Trump, which is why I feel he shouldn't have been given a visa to come and visit the multicultural country that we are so proud of. Thank you. Sir Edward Lee. Yes. Uh, sorry. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. widely yeah, yeah. quoted yeah, yeah. this morning, I think it was Dave Farrell saying she was going to trash Donald Trump this afternoon. Well, I'm not sure that he's going to be terribly worried about this <laughs> debate. I do uh, respect the Honourable Member, my friend, the Member for Newport West, for the measured way in which he introduces debate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, may I just say that, naturally, uh, it's no surprise when I say I oppose this ban. I think it just gives Donald Trump publicity. Actually, it's the only item uh, in the US press about British politics at the moment, this debate, which we're sitting in. They're not talking about Corbyn mania or Brexit or anything else. They're talking about this. So, you know, why, why feed this machine? Um, we saw what happened with Gert Builders. Did that do any good? I don't think it did. The Honourable Member for Newport West made this point in his measured speech. Uh, secondly, of course, it offends free speech. And actually, uh, in a free country, you have the right to offend people. And uh, I introduced an amendment to Clause 5 of the Public Order Act, making that quite clear. I offend people in this House all the time, uh, and that's my perfect <laughs> right uh, to do. A third point is, of course, the United States is a friendly country. Twice in two world wars, it's come to our rescue. Uh, this man uh, may conceivably become president of our most important ally. Uh, fourthly, you can't translate American politics to UK politics, which is completely different. I mean, I, I was doing a debate earlier uh, this year on full fiscal autonomy for Scotland, and the Labour spokesman me, des described me as an extreme right winger, God forbid. Yeah. Although, <laughs> although my amendment had been supported by John McDonnell, the shadow chancellor, who's a backbencher. No, <laughs> whether he's an extreme right winger, I don't know. But as it happens, <laughs> I'm strongly in favour of gun control. I voted consistently against bombing Syria and invading Iraq. I'm strongly in favour of the NHS, which I use exclusively, and I'm opposed to capital punishment. Would, would I survive in the Republican Party? Although I'm told I'm an extreme right winger. So our politics is completely different, and it's a great mistake to try and translate it. So... Petitions like this, they're, they're good, they're a bit of good fun, but if, God forbid, the government was to act on it, it would only play into Mr. Trump's Absolutely. hands. Absolutely. His entire style of politics is to stoke controversy and say outrageous things, lavishing with intention, attention, even if our intent is to condemn or deride, is only falling into the trap he has set for us. His continuing popularity amongst voters is evidence of this. And he is popular with many voters. We may not like it, but he is. I think we must be aware of, wary of lowering ourselves to demagoguery in fighting demagogues. We, we all lament the divisiveness of politics, which viewed from afar, from our side of the pond, seems particularly divisive in the United States. Does a debate like this really help, or banning him even worse? We oppose Mr. Trump for demonizing his opponents. Most of us in this room oppose us, 
oppose him for demonizing his opponents. If we ban him from the country, are we not in danger of doing the same? Like it or not, he is also quite a contender to be the head of of state of what is arguably the most powerful country in the planet, a country which is a vital ally of us. Now, we've welcomed to this country Saudi and Chinese leaders, not to mention Mr. Ceausescu, whose crimes are far, far worse than anything Mr. Trump can dream up. These are people who actually don't just talk about violence, they practice violence on an extreme scale, and we have welcomed them to our country. I'm a firm believer in free speech. It's a cause I have combined with such unlikely bedfellows as the National Secular Society and the Christian Institute. If we only allow free speech for those we already agree with, is that free speech at all? Dialogue is a solution and not deeper division. And let me end by saying that this is also an attempt to shut down an honest debate about immigration. As soon as you talk about immigration, you are labelled as a right-winger, as a racist. That is not the way to solve this problem of integration. And it was a fantastic article the Prime Minister wrote in the Times today, making the worthwhile and good point that our Muslim friends have to learn from previous waves of success immigrants, particularly the Jews in the 19th century and others who have chosen to integrate fully in our society. And here are some... Uh, of the prominent immigrants and children of immigrants, all intensely identified in British, all of whom arrived long before Britain's uh, present post-war immigration waves. Hans Holbein, George Frederick Handel, Frederick William Herschel, Isaac and Benjamin Disraeli, Christina Rossetti, Gustav Holst, Augustus Pugin, Louis of Battenberg and his son Louis Mountbatten, Hilaire Belloc, Joseph Conrad, George Louis de Maurier, Winston Churchill, Leo Amory, T.S. Eliot, Louis Namier, Larry Constantine, Alexander Corder, Michael Pressburger, Nicholas Pevsner, Isaiah Berlin, Jeffrey Elton, the two Michael Howards, Solly Zuckerman. This list, and this is the final point I make, this list ill- eliminates a fundamental point. Although these figures immensely enhance British life, They did not make their adopted nation cosmopolitan. Their adopted nation made these these cosmopolitans British, and we should be proud of them. Gavin Robbins. Thank you very much, uh, Sir Roger, and I I do appreciate the opportunity to contribute so early uh, in this debate. Sir Roger, whenever I was considering my remarks uh, for this debate, uh, I thought I would be in conflict with the Honourable Member for Newport West, uh, but I'm pleased to say uh, that's not the case. Uh, but for both he and the Honourable Member for Sutton uh, and Cheam, I do want to make one point about exclusion uh, for the Petitions Committee because when I log on as a Northern Ireland member and try to access their online map, Northern Ireland, of course, doesn't exist. Uh, and if there is an issue of uh, exclusion, I hope that is one that can be addressed when you sort out the licensing uh, with Ordnance Survey. I'm also quite uh, uh, concerned, apprehensive, uh, Sir Roger, that the Right Honourable Member for Chelmsford is in the Uh, the Chamber today. As the Chief Parliamentary Proponent for Hillary, uh, I wonder if there will be an intervention made uh, to the detriment uh, detriment of uh, Donald Trump. Um, I never thought I would say it, but I agree wholeheartedly with that dreadful right-winger, the Right Honourable Member for Gainsborough. Uh, He he is right, uh, Sir Roger. Uh, And I do have to say uh, that in this debate it is important that we consider the principles of democracy the principles of therm and thorough debate, uh, and the fact that when you have a strong and a good principled position, we should stand robustly by it, not run from it or fear the opposition or the contrary arguments uh, that others may make, be they in this country or from afar. Members of this uh, Westminster Hall uh, present today will know of Lyndon Crosby, the political uh, advisor, uh, analyst, And he talks about the dead cat on the table theory. And the idea of that theory is if you're losing the argument or if you're not getting referred to at all, throw a dead cat on the table and people will notice. They will stop and you will change uh, the direction of political discourse and debate. And of course, that's exactly uh, what Donald Trump is doing. It's not just once or a one-off initiative. It's something that marks his campaign uh, entirely. He throws the dead cat on the table and people stop, stop considering what they were considering, stop doing what they were doing and listen to him uh, and take him seriously. Now I think uh, there will be those uh, today and there has been one member already, the Honourable Member for uh, uh, Hampstead and Kilburn, uh, who will support the exclusion 
of Donald Trump. And while some of those contributions today won't make that argument, I want to see Donald Trump come to this country and either be grilled by members of Parliament or grilled by Andrew Neil or grilled by those great uh, interrogators we have within the public discourse in this country. I want them to challenge him. I want him to get a sense of the fury and the frustration with his xenophobic remarks. Let him leave this country feeling that actually there are better principles uh, than what he has politically outlined so far. We should be proud of our values uh, as a country and proud of the values that we would like to see uh, placed uh, throughout the world. So confront him, challenge him and confound him into recognising that what he has outlined may get you the headlines. It may change the nature of political discourse uh, in the United States or across the world, but it's bad policy and it would change uh, the nature and the image and the reputation of the United States irrevocably uh, from those founding fathers and those individuals who have built up so much over the last uh, three centuries. Turning to the uh, debate uh, we have had, I think it's uh, important, Sir Roger, that I do reflect today that we have the leader of the opposition uh, who is indicating that it would be appropriate to open back channels with Daesh. Back channels with Daesh. Yet we have members of the same party today saying we should exclude somebody who politically has erred uh, but who is not a terrorist. Back channels with Daesh for what? To reasonably negotiate with somebody who will consider that negotiation in the context of whether they murder your wife or they rape her first before they cut off their head? That's the same leader of the opposition, the same shadow chancellor uh, within this parliament today who gave succor to terrorists in our United Kingdom over the last 30 years, who supported the IRA murdering citizens in Northern Ireland and murdering our countrymen within this country. To put into context what it is we're being asked to believe from the Honourable Member of uh, Hampstead that it would be appropriate to ban somebody who has erred in political dialogy, ideology, but hasn't erred in law, hasn't promoted terrorism, hasn't promoted extremism to the extent that we lose life, uh, that we damage and we destroy communities. But I will, of course. The Honourable Member think legislation in the country should be applied equally to everyone? I do think it does, but what I am doing is setting clear blue water uh, between the support that has been given by her honourable leader in years gone by in this country for terrorists who have destroyed, maimed and killed and somebody who is a ridiculous, a ridiculous xenophobe uh, but somebody that we don't need to promote any further, Sir Roger. Uh, that is the point uh, that I wish to make. And for those who I believe will take a hypocritical stance, uh, those north of the border from where we uh, now sit but still very much part uh, of our United Kingdom. Those who lauded, those who applauded Donald Trump, those who invited him to the country, appointed him as an ambassador, yes. and regaled him with all the civic support and uh, adoration they could because of brass tacks. That's the same. Of course I will. Of course I will. Um, thank you, thank you, Chair. I'm very, very obliged to you for giving away. Is there a member's suggestion that if somebody had a crystal ball, we could predict that this individual could conceivably make the comments he's made condemning an entire religion? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, Sir Roger, I'm very grateful for the intervention, and I'll say this. If I ever criticise someone or some party or something in this chamber, I will always give a, a right uh, to respond. But I have to say, Sir Roger, you didn't need a crystal ball. And it has been referred to already. Uh, the ridiculous involvement Donald Trump had in the birther scandal around Barack Obama's uh, lineage. Was he born in Hawaii or was he born in Kenya? Was he a Christian or was he a Muslim? That wasn't nine months ago. That was in 2008 and nine. You didn't need a crystal ball. You just needed to know who you were working with. 25 years ago, 25 years ago, Sir Roger, when his wife divorced him, she took the opportunity to say her much-loved former husband, used to lie in bed at night and read the works of Adolf Hitler. So you don't need a crystal ball to recognise that the person you're dealing with, maybe a successful businessman, is also a buffoon and has the dangerous capability, the dangerous capability of saying the most obscene or insensitive things to attract attention. None of that should be new, Sir Roger, but yet I don't think we will avoid uh, the hypocrisy around it. 
Uh, Sir Roger, I've been given additional minutes, it seems, uh, with interventions. I am grateful uh, for the time, but as a party and as an individual, I could not support, could not support the exclusion of Donald Trump from this country. Yeah. Bring him here. Let us have the opportunity to challenge him and let him go home with his tail between his legs and recognize that the principles he espoused no longer reflect this country, the United States of America, or the aspirations that we should all seek to promote internationally. Yeah. Yeah.